Hey, it's Tim, Pickup Truck Plus SUV Talk. And the 2022 Toyota Tundra is gonna go down as one of the more interesting launches of trucks. We had a long delay with marketing their strategy. We have the big unveil during a football game. We have uh, lots of new information from this truck, but to me, there's a lot of like, hits and misses. And so it took me about a week after the event to kind of sit down and say, let's go through the hits and misses. Let's make, I just needed some time to sink in. So let's go ahead and get these hits and misses on the screen or likes and dislikes. What do you want to say? Uh, however nice you're being today. So starting with, let's start with the good. Cause I always feel like focusing on the good is, is the right approach before we get into those things that, well, I'm not a big fan of. The good has got to be in this truck immediately performance, right? So Toyota has always had a problem with the Tundra being criticized for poor fuel economy, and so they address that. They have two engines here. We have the 3.5-liter twin-turbo V6 with 389 horsepower, 470 foot-pounds of torque, and then the iForce Max, that's the powertrain of the hybrid. That's the, that's the one people are really going to be concerned with as far as better performance. 437 horsepower, 583 foot-pounds of torque, and that torque is at a low, like, 2,400 RPMs, and so it almost behaves like a diesel, like if, you, if you've seen the interview with chief engineer Mike Spears, he said, I can't have a diesel, so I want the hybrid to act like a diesel. I want to, to have the performance like a diesel. And so I think we're going to see that. I think we're going to have lots of performance. Um, as somebody who owned the Power Boost, which is Ford's version of this, I can tell you that the hybrid has lots of power. There's no, there's no lack of power. I mean, you go to pass, even at 70 miles an hour, there's a lot more in the tank to go. I mean, just it just feels like the pedal's really responsive to how much power there is. So no problems there. Towing is pretty uh, pretty good with the, with the hybrid because you have that electrical electricity working with the, the gasoline engine. So you have lots of performance in that torque. Uh, up to 12,000 pounds maximum towing capacity. So that went up. Payload's up to almost 1,900 pounds or a little bit over 1,900 pounds. So they've done the things to improve performance. And I know um, from my experience that the hybrid will probably do at least three, four miles per gallon better than the V8 on a consistent basis. It's not going to be you're not going to be a wow factor there as far as milk fuel economy, but it's going to be a big jump. And people understand how much like one mile per gallon is a huge deal to engineers because it requires so much work to get there. So this is, that's big. I mean, it's really big performance. Am I sad there's no V8? Yeah. I wish there was a V8. One of my criticisms of the, the power boost I had was it's just not an exciting drive. There's no uh, throaty sound. There's no good exhaust note. It's just it doesn't sound cool. And, well, I guess we're giving that up because these days emissions is forcing V8s to go away. It's forcing a bunch of hybrid changes. So this is the future. This is what's going to happen. So I think performance is the biggest one we're going to take away from this truck is that, um, yes, don't have a V8. Yes, don't have a diesel. But the hybrid will probably win some people over the more you drive it. The second uh, thing I want to get to is lockers. And this is going to be kind of part two and part three. Uh, we finally have an electronic locking rear differential for the TRD Pro. This is something that's been criticized, TRD Pro, for a long time. Uh, I know I've gone back and forth with some engineers, and you don't technically always need it, you know, if, if you can power away at a lot of stuff. But when all the other brands offer lockers, even front and rear, for like the, the Silverado ZR2, you need to catch up. And I think it's great that they said, okay, whether we like it or not, we're going to do a locker, we're going to do a rear locker, we'll give people more options. So now you have crawl control, you have the active train, you have the lockers, so you're going to be, or locker, you're going to be much more off-road capable. And I'm excited to see that that is something to listen to the fans. And this is like number three, kind of, kind of going into that, is they fixed a lot of small issues. Like they really um, looked at some things that had gotten criticized and they fixed those small issues. What I'm talking about, and this is something that doesn't always make the headlines, is we have a grab handle on the driver's side. That, that's critical for me. I hate grabbing the steering wheel. It always shifts. I don't feel good about it. I don't feel like grabbing it. I just don't like anything about it. I know engineers have told me the steering wheel can handle me grabbing it, but I like a grab handle. <laughs> I, just, <laughs> I like a grab handle. Trucks have gotten taller. I like to use my left hand to grab hold of that or right hand to pull myself in, whatever. I like the grab handle. I think that's big. Uh, rear storage, underneath the bottom of the rear seats. You know, there has been always a lack of storage in these trucks. Um, I know when I owned mine in the two generations ago, or however you want to say it, I owned the 2013, uh, storage. There wasn't as many storage. Like, if you go to a Ram truck, they got storage bins underneath the, underneath the floor. They got all sorts of hooks in the back. In this case, we have some rear storage underneath the seats, and we have one hook behind the seat as you fold down the seat. So we have, have some better storage options. I'm excited to see that. I'm excited to see that, you know, especially in the cab, it looks like you can put some rifles in there or shotguns and tie down straps and things and then close the seat, which is gonna be awesome. If you've ever been on a farm, you always carry a weapon with you for snakes and things like that. And having that in the truck and having secured out of, out of sight um, 
big win there. So I'm, I'm really pleased they fixed those small issues. Uh, the other uh, issue they fixed, which I think is pretty big, number four, is ride quality. You know, ride quality has always been an issue with that Triple Trek frame. For better or worse, um, it just didn't result in a good ride quality. Toyota's been hit on this in the past. They fixed that. They have new coil link suspension. I think the fully boxed frame. So they've, they've strengthened the frame. They've taken weight out. And I'll talk more about weight in a second. And they've added the multi-link coil suspension. So you should have a really good ride. As Mike Swear said, he says he doesn't want anybody to say, this truck rides like a truck. He wants to have a really smooth ride. That's his goal. I think he's going to get there. I mean, if you've driven a Ram truck lately, it's amazing how well they drive and how they're just basically like a big sedan. Um, the bed. And I think this is kind of going to be glossed over too. But they uh, they took the bed from the Tacoma. They did a composite bed, which is like a, a composite plastic kind of bed, and they put it in the full-size truck. Now, people say, oh, it's plastic. It's going to break. It's going to be terrible, you know. Never had any problems with Tacoma. Tacoma owners never had a problem with their bed. I don't foresee full-size trucks having a problem because they make this stuff really strong these days, the materials. And so I think this bed's going to be really strong. It's going to be lighter weight. And the biggest thing with, with the composite construction, it won't rust. It won't rust. It won't get a, show a, lot, a ton of dings. It's going to hand up or, or handle pretty well. It almost reminds me of the carbon fiber bed that GM's working on. It's the same idea. We're making a bed now that won't rust. It's going to last longer. It can take the abuse. And if you looked at the million-mile truck, and if you noticed Mike Spears' interview, uh, there's a video on that as well. Uh, he looked at the, the bed and saw how damaged the bed was. So they needed to make the bed stronger, and they addressed that by making this a stronger bed. So that really comes down to the QDR, which is really focused on their reliability. They've done, I think, again, I think they've addressed all the criticisms of the prior generation truck. They've made the small fixes. I think it's a better product overall from an engineering standpoint. I think they've done a great job engineering. My bad list, the things that I don't really care for, it's really about design in many of these cases. Um, when I saw the photos come out of the truck and I've seen spy photos and I've ran all this kind of stuff, I kept saying, no, there's no way. <laughs> I, kept, I was like, there's no way this is going to be the real thing. This is just a test mule. This is just something that they kind of put together. Nope. It's exactly what you think. And when I was there in uh, Texas looking at this truck um, in person, I, wow. I, it, it, it is polarizing. I know Toyota loves polarizing designs, especially full-size trucks, because they're not going to be the segment leader in this. They know that. They don't have the capacity. They don't have the, the, the drive to do that. But they want to stand out. They want to be different. So they want to make a very polarized look. And this one's going to take me a while. This styling's going to take me a while to get used to. Um, I just, yeah, <laughs> I think that's I've said enough. Uh, the, the second thing that, that kind of a thing irritated me was the back bumper. Uh, the design team thought it would be a great idea to make the bumper come around a little bit and not go all the way across. And I'll put some video on the screen because I think there's a problem with that that's not being looked at. A little controversial back here. This this bumper is interesting. Integrated into the bumper instead of being a separate kind of piece, um, it's it's different. It's, it, it is interesting. Um, if you did damage it, you're replacing this whole piece right there. And what I, what I, one of my concerns with it is when the tailgate is down, I have no place to hop on to get in the truck. I have to hop on a tailgate, climb in. So I lose that little bit of foothold there. And, I, and then there's no easy way to get in the truck either. So that's a really interesting sign piece you need to know. Okay, number three thing that I, I just don't understand is that um, I have yet to see a TRD Pro. I've yet to see any Tundra model with tow hooks. Like, I'm like where did tow hooks go? Like, I use tow hooks all the time. You know, I, I, I pull vehicles out, I get vehicles stuck. I mean, I'm always a, using tow hooks. I'd rather use, do that than to crawl underneath the axle and wrap something around the axle now or something, you know, underneath the, uh, the hood, uh, underneath the, the truck. You can. I mean, for years we had that because we didn't have any tow hooks on a lot of trucks. But I don't understand why we don't have tow hooks. Like, it, it just kind of boggles my mind. We, we get the rear locker back in TRD Pro. We get the grab handle. We get the rear storage. We get performance back. And then we lose tow hooks. I, I just mystified by this whole situation. And, oh, then we get the LED light bar, but we don't get tow hooks. I just, I don't know, a little bizarre to me. I'm, I'm not, just not sure. Uh, number four thing that, uh, this is a Toyota thing, not a uh, anything about Tundra, is there's not really many options. There's a TRD off-road package and TRD sport package, which is kind of a wheels and tires and stickers kind of package. But we don't have a whole lot of options. Like, I, you can't get a color-matched front bumper, uh, except if you go platinum. That's the only way you can get it. I don't want to go platinum to get, you know, my color of my truck on the front of my bumper, which I think looks better. I don't want to have to, to do that. I wish there was 
more options to customize the truck to my looks, to my, well, not looks, but to my desire, because there's just not enough, um, the, the initial design is off-putting to me. I think if I, if I could just add some body color match on the front bumper, or I can add a few details, I think I could find a truck that looks pretty good, but I can't. So I'm really hoping like the distributors like Southeast Toyota or someplace, uh, they, what they do is they buy a bunch of Tundras, they modify them how they want to and ship them to sales lots. That's why some trucks like in Georgia are different than trucks in Texas, different trucks in California. I'm hoping somebody at Southeast Toyota has some idea on how to improve this look because I want to buy this truck. I just got to get over how it looks. It's just, it's tough. It's just not something that I'm used to. So yeah, I just was like, well, I was kind of hoping there's more options. Uh, and my fifth thing on this truck... And I think this is this is coming, but it's it's not here yet. Um, I don't have an overwhelming sense of a wow factor. And, and I know I'm getting old, and I'm getting critical, and I'm getting cranky, and I, I see a lot of new trucks all the time, and I get that. But I'm not seeing anything really wows me, you know. So we have the hybrid powertrain, but we don't have power on board. And I asked Mike that. He was like, well, I'm with construction folks. They don't need the power on board. I'm like, I use power on board on the power boost all the time. It was one of my favorite features. You know, I mean, I don't care about the hybrid. Give me the power on board. And I'm like, you can just run an inverter and some plugs and you're done. Those software inverter plugs are done. They've done all the other work. They put, they put the hybrid system in. So I'm just surprised that there's no, there's no plugs back there. I mean, and the other thing that's, that's a little bit a uh, wow factor with that is the batteries underneath the rear seat, which means if you do the hybrid, you lose the under seat rear storage. So you, there's no win there either because that's all the battery now. So... I'm like, oh, I want to find the wow factor. 12,000 pounds towing, great. I will never tow 12,000 pounds a half ton truck. I think it's unsafe. Okay, no wow factor there. I have all the safety sense technology throughout all the grades. So did everybody else. Um, I have the 14 inch touchscreen. Cool. <laughs> it's a truck. I want, where's my wow factors? Where's my, I just, I, I, it just, that's my, that's my overall thing is that. The more I read press release, the more I saw it, the more I talked to people about it, the more I looked at it, the more I talked to my other journalists about it, the more it came back to one word. Disappointed. I, I just think there was, I just think there's more that could be done. And again, the wow factor may be the fuel economy and the ride, ride quality. I mean, they, they may have knocked out of the park and that may be your wow factor, but I just, I wanted something to wow me and I didn't feel wild. So let me know below. Do you feel wild by this truck? Is it, is it really grabbing your attention? Um, is, am I missing something big that I'm forgetting? I know there's going to be a lot of conversation about V8. You know, I, I understand that. I, I'm telling you the hybrid of the 10 speed is pretty darn good these days and it's just where we're going. But um, let me know below. What, what are you guys' thoughts? Check the videos over here. There's a whole playlist of 2022 Toyota Tundras. Website down below. As always, thanks for watching. I'll see you down the road.